All right, you got tons of money in the bank. You're going, what can I spend it on? Gee, hold on. I mean, isn't there an $1,800 knife out here? Or, you know, $2,500 knife? And I'm sitting there going, how about a $25 knife? You know, get your wife in here. Um, Mrs. So-and-so, would you rather have him buy a $2,500 knife or a $25 knife? Let her vote, okay? The Y start. The Y start LK upside down all the way. LK 5021 BL. What do you think BL stands for? I'm thinking blue, but that's just a wild guess. That's the wag theory. Um, we got a flipper tab on it. We got jimping on that. It's a nice little, you know, design flow. I, you know, this is why I got this. Yeah, I've done Y Start knives before, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I like Y Start. I think they're generally good quality knives. Um, this one's got no blade play or lock rock. Here's the lock up. That's 35 to 40%. Disengage, not a problem. Don't you hate it when a $25 knife does better than, than your $250 knife? That's really insulting, isn't it? It's, it's disappointing. You go, I wanted to spend more money, but why? Why start now? Um, there's your backspacer. Black G10 pocket clip. Deep carry, but we got the Egg McMuffin screw there. Uh, so it's not like it's a flat screw. And we've seen flat screws on other knives, which is a good thing, but not on this one. And yeah, I mean, other than that, it's, it's a, come here. I mean, it's a $24.99 banger. White Mountain Knives. I got mine on White Mountain Knives. Did I print something on the back? No, not really. Um, so 25 bucks. And I used LTK discount code so you get a rock and what, 250 off or something like that. So it's it's Ganzo, baby, in case you're just tired of buying Ganzos. They haven't come out with anything in a while. So check this out. 8.6, almost a four inch blade on it, a 440C. Remember when 440, I remember this, 440C was like the cool steel back in like, 1990, 92, that kind of thing. There were custom knife makers using it. Whoo, baby. And now people call it like silver colored, you know, uh, paper or something. They, they think it's so lousy, it's a junk steel. It is not a junk steel, okay? Let's just clarify that. So 440, yeah. I mean, look up the, look up the elementals on this and start comparing it across to like, Maybe OS 8, if you think OS 8 is all that great, or a bunch of, you know, VG10 or some others, and you'll be kind of surprised. There ain't a whole lot of difference in the composition. Oh, baby, she tears it right. Oh, get off of there. It was holding on for dear life, but that's sharp. That's sharp. So, and it shouldn't take a whole lot to hone it back to a real sharp edge. Once you use it for a while, but this one, no crying at any tears if you lose it or this or that, because it's a you know, twenty-two dollar after discount or whatever uh, knife, and it's got G10, and it's got pretty good texture on it, and how much does it weigh by the way? Let's figure that one out. But you know this is probably the favorite of my Y starts that I've ever done. Uh, so far, so I really like that. And it's 4.36 and let's uh, 123, almost 124 grams. So it's not that heavy, not for a big boy like it is, and it is a pretty good size knife. Check it out. Is that four inches down there, back of that toil? I'm asking. And you know, that's 100, it's not quite 100 up here, but when it's 97, yeah, you got a pretty good blade length because that's over three and yeah, it's three point eight something, and at the at the least, at the least, and then you're out to yeah eight point six at about twenty two centimeters. You got a twenty two centimeter long knife. You you got a pretty good knife there. I mean, saying good by good sized, 
Uh, 14.7. Yeah, 0.57 of an inch thick on that. So that's a handful. 3.3 uh, millimeter blade stock. So, okay, blade stock's not too thick. Uh, it's got jimping on top of it. Uh, the pass throughs easy to kick it. Oh, let's get over there. Okay. Once this um, flipper tab hits you in the thumb, boom. And you know, it's so it's got it's got flickability to it. Here it goes. And we'll take it apart and maybe make it even better. Oh, here we go with the ever dangerous stuff. And you know what? I've got a special tool for that. I do, but you could use a screwdriver or some other stuff. Uh, but yes, I mean, there is a little kit you can get that has torxes and everything else you need, plus this actual Y-Start kit. So yeah, I, I like the ergos on it. It's really neutral here. So everything fits on. If you got big hands, you're still okay with this. Reverse grip, that's good. And... Yeah, there's your balance point. You know, a good looking knife. I like, uh, you know, I like, I like the uh, overall design. I guess this kind of attracts me as well. It's a little kind of a semblance of a harpoon effect here as well. And, you know, if you want to get there and get a little bit more control on the blade, you got this little cutaway here so you can run your sharpening stone up there and down and not bang into everything else when you get down at that end because I'm sloppy when I do my stuff too. So, you know, I might as well just give me the cutaway so I don't run into everything. And, you know, it's showing the liners, which means it really feels, you know, structurally sound here. They're not just really super thin liners that are, that are nested in here. And, you know, I mean, for little over 20 bangers, um, you know, they, they went and uh, skeletonized the liners as well. So uh, you can't complain there. And I don't know, I guess I'd call that somewhat contoured G10 here because of the way this is going. Uh, but I like the effect on it as well. I think it's a pretty good looking knife. I think it should be a good user as far as piercing, slicing, and just all around whatever. And like magic, what is this? Is this another knife? No. No, it's not. Check it out. And will wonders never cease? How about that, huh? I don't think that cost... I, I'm not sure. I think a friend sent this to me as part of a trade deal or something. Because I don't think I bought this myself. But check all this out. Um, yeah. I mean, I think you got a little number five. Uh, yeah, and you got some other, you know, uh, tips as well for Phillips, screwdriver, some, yeah, maybe some torxes you, it might be a little bit big and or somewhat smaller than you need, but they're here. And let me see. I think this is a number six just eyeballing it. And of course it's not. So this one looks too small, but it's probably just right. And it is. Okay. So put this one back. And we can do the whole thing with the Y Start tool kit. Because uh, I'd rather be a tool than a fool and get on there, damn it. Um, so check this out. This is the main bit that comes with it. You think this might work? Hmm. So yeah, how, how, how absolutely wonderful that is. So you won't be frustrated anymore. And that's it. Bingo, bango. Oh, what do we see? A D-shaped pivot? How could they be that intelligent? Now, next. Uh, yeah, especially even for 20-something dollars. Next. Kick it. Ooh, yeah. 
we got you unstuck. You wanted to hold on for a little bit, didn't you? And next. Come on, don't be shy. You're coming out too. I wouldn't say these are hardened German steel bits like Weehaw, so you might be sticking them in. And these are those mini bits. You can get Weehaw mini bits, in fact. Where is my damn little Weehaw driver, by the way? It's around here somewhere. But yeah, you can you can do that. Like this. Weehaw, get this on KC Tool. But this gives you the seven piece. Uh, and, and you can see T3 through T8 and the little bits that come out the end. So these are the German hardened steel. So you might be able to go ahead and just swap them out in this, in this thing here. And then you can keep this going. But, I mean, at least you got this bit to take the pivot off. Okay, so now supposedly we got screws off of here. Supposedly we must because here comes the whole deal. And we lost this screw, which is hiding under the knife. We'll knock the other one out and look to be at the same length. Here's our G10 Wonderful Wonder. And have we got any screws holding this liner? No, which is a good thing. So this ought to come off, theoretically. And it does, and it's skeletonized, and it feels stonewashed to me. So it's nice and smooth. What more do they have to do? Um, and then the bearings, okay, nothing to brag about there necessarily. Here's our blade stop, that's okay. And then these bearings, come on out of there. They're not ceramic. They're not multi-row. Wow. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting there going, for this price? What the hell? I'm lucky to get bearings. Um, and there's a little, you know, that looks like a little bit of a burn. I'm, I'm seeing these more and more. Uh, but I don't think it heated it enough to hurt the temper on the actual steel when it's this far away. So, and then again, I don't want to see the picture of how they ground this blade. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe that would change my mind. Um, and God only knows how many other knives. And there's your D-shaped pivot. So all one bingo bango and that come from the back. Okay. I mean, you'd think that'd be a cleaner look from the front. You'd want to take it all apart on the back, but okay. I mean, it is what it is. And then, of course, the flat spot on the on the liner that holds everything in place to keep it from spinning. And it's skeletonized here, too. And then there's your backspacer here. And, of course, cut away here for a lanyard, which means that your lanyard cord's got some gap here to lay down and not have to rest on the lanyard cord. So it gives you some clearance there. And of course that, my friend, uh, does kind of look like a ceramic detent ball from where I'm sitting. All right, so I guess if we're gonna put it back together, reverse our process here and uh, stand it right up, run that through uh, the liner. We got bearing. We're going to plonk on there. Nothing fancy about the bearings, but they seem to work fine. Uh, let's put this blade back on. Oh, first, let's do this. This blade stop. Okay. Now, roll this around. Of course, we're compressing that lock bar. And we're going to put the other set of bearings on here. And then we are going to put a liner on here, just like that, and I think, okay, okay, snap it together. Then we've got this outer uh, scale, and what kind of crazy thing is this? Well... Here's my little tool once again, and I'm not gonna lock it down too hard right now. I'll do that a little bit later when I want to adjust it. And here is that, and that, and uh, I guess I should put this in the 
in the driver here. Let's put this back on. And that's good. And, uh, so I guess if you want to get into the Y start scene, you might want to get that tool. Pretty crazy, huh? Okay, now we're going to flip it over and we're going to actually do use that tool to, uh, eh, I don't, I don't want to kick it down too hard. Yeah, it's centered. Um, that's about the way it was before. You have to really make sure that you get back far enough for that flipper tab to hit you in the thumb, and then you're good. So, yeah, it's a good drop. Actually, you know this Y Start box? Uh, it reminds me a lot of a Tucson box, doesn't it to you? Tucson knife box? Uh, probably the same company makes them and just puts different, you know, graphics on them. I mean, it, that's what it reminds me of. Uh, but, you know, you're not going to get a whole lot of fancy packaging with a $25 banger, but uh, it's sharp, seems to cut well, uh, good ergos. It's a good size knife. I like that, but it's not that heavy, four and a half ounces. Yeah, I mean, if, if you like this kind of thing, it, you know, kind of chasing the unusual brands, this and that, just because you're curious, you want to try them out, plus really almost no money in it anyhow, so why not? Yeah, then this might be for you. Uh, we are. We're Love Them Knives, guys. So thank you so much. Subscribe to my channel and stay sharp.